Hey, beautiful rebel healers and spiritual entrepreneurs. Welcome to the weird week that is the week between Christmas and New Year's. Say hi if you're tuning in live. Say hi and let me know with the hashtag replay if you're catching the replay. Ask questions at any time. I'm doing this to support you in either quitting your day job to do work you love or starting creating the foundation for a healing business and scaling that business so you can make consistent 5 to 10k months with ease and joy and pleasure and play and sometimes that shit is hard right and that's kind of the theme of the week it's coming up with a lot of people i know a lot of peers a lot of clients and i just want to normalize that like it is hard enough to exist as a human being on this planet in these times but i'd venture to guess you didn't come here to this facebook group or here to this planet because you wanted it easy you're here because you are resilient you are courageous and you have something that's pulling at you something that says "Ugh, i meant for so much more i meant to be doing so much good i meant to be doing things that matter to me there's something pulling at you and i wanted to talk about this concept of vocation right it's something that you might hear a lot of in divinity school in uh, religious institutions this idea that god goddess god with a big g something is pulling you compelling you to do service work that's where we typically hear it with like I have the vocation of being a priest. But in times past, humans also had vocations for whatever they were doing, whether that was being the shaman of the local village, whether it was being the person who communed with spirits, whether it was being the witchy woman that people went to for healing recipes, or the one that folks went to for herbal remedies um, just for childbirth, right? In human time, these things that we did for work to help others and to support ourselves were vocational. And it wasn't even a question. It was what we did, right? If your mom was the village healer, chances are you also became the village healer. If your dad was the one who, um, you know, was the leather crafter of the community you were part of, you probably also became that leather crafter. The problem and the beauty in our current societal structure is that this vocation often gets lost. We're taught from a young age we can be whatever we want, we can do anything we want, which is true. There's access to so many things, so many things and so many ways of being. But it also leaves us with this hungry ghost, with this urge, with this hunger, with this drive of like, what am I supposed to do with my life? What am I doing? What am I supposed to be doing? What makes the most sense? And, you know, we graduate high school, we go to college or you do some kind of trade skill, and then we get into the workforce and work for a big company, and then we feel hollow, and then we have all these bills to pay, and, you know, we're supposed to do the American dream of, all right, now I get the family, get the house with the white picket fence, and now I work my job that, oh, I hate because everybody hates what they're doing in the work, and then eventually you get to retire and love your life. I don't buy that. I don't buy that, and I never bought it, which is why I was in HR and recruiting for 15 years. But the longest I was ever at one company was three years because I kept trying to find my fit elsewhere. I have cried in every job I've ever had. Let me know if you are also in the club of crying at every job you've ever had. Um, and I knew the whole time I was in corporate America that it wasn't what I wanted to do, but I didn't know what else I was going to do. And I explored every healing art. I thought about going back to school for acupuncture, going back to school uh, to become a licensed therapist, but none of it was the right thing. And I finally realized, oh, I have to, and I get to craft my vocation. But in order to create something from scratch, it requires a shit ton of gumption, resilience, courage, and the willingness to fall on your face again and again and again. 
I was reviewing my last year and looking at the number of failed launches that I had. And I had, I launched three different things this year where I had zero signups, zero people, zero dollars. And I still was able to uh, net cash $134,000 this year with failure, with being pregnant, with giving birth to a tiny human. And I could have used any of that to say, oh, also there's a global pandemic happening, P.S. I could have used any of that to put my vocation and my desire to have a business and to help others have their own business and let it work for them. I could have set that down at any of these hurdles, right? No, it's too hard. No, I guess I got to go back to corporate America. And sometimes those steps are necessary. But I always held a focus, my North Star of, no, this vocation that's, that I'm calling in is also calling me. There's something bigger at play. There's something more to this. And I will never forget, this is what got me to the Orphan Wisdom School. I heard a woman say, I just had this constant underlying sense that it doesn't have to be this way. And I thought, yeah, that, that. And that is part and parcel for why it is so effing hard to build a conscious cosmic online healing business that works for you and is of service to others and makes you money, right? It's hard, but crafting it in a way that works for you and your family, that heals the globe and makes you money is worth it. But crafting this vocation requires devotion devotion and commitment. It requires going all in. I think I spent three to five years of my life going back and forth between, oh, do I want this? Do I not want this? Is this for me? Is it not for me? What do I do? Can I quit? How am I going to make money? What do I do about health insurance? The amount of time, energy, anxiety, and actual like money that was wasted waffling is not worth it. It is of critical importance to commit to yourself and to choose each morning to commit again. I will never forget this lesson. My ex-girlfriend was an amazing human being, is an amazing human being. And when I was at the end of my corporate career, she told me, she's like, Emily, each day you need to get up in the morning and decide to commit to your job that day. Like you're in until you're not in. And she's right. And she's right about being an entrepreneur as well. Each day I get up and commit to my business. It's not easy all the time. Many of you have businesses. This is not easy, right? It's not easy. But how do I invite more ease? How do I create more pleasure? How do I create more abundance and play and focus on all the juice and the good stuff and inviting more in even with the hard? Like struggle doesn't have to suck. Building a business doesn't have to suck, right? But how do we find the way to enjoy it in a world that's hard? Most people that set out to start a business fail. Like over 90% of people who start businesses don't keep them beyond the one to three year mark. It's crazy, right? And with business coaching, with being all in, with committing, with understanding your vocation, you have a much higher success rate that's possible. But it's that commitment, that devotion, that dedication, that all in, no matter what, that gumption that says, I'm, I'm going to figure this out. And that's what got me through my first full year of business. Because, oh man, did it suck. It was not working. I had six months of expenses, living expenses saved up before I quit my day job, quit the day job and started helping people quit their nine to five job and start their own business. That was like my original niche and business. And I tried everything. I got on podcasts. I did guest blogs. I blogged for all uh, different types of online newsletters. Um, I did webinars. I did $25 phone calls. I was willing to do whatever it took to have a successful business. And I highly recommend it. However, <laughs> all the things I learned the hard way, I get to help you and help my clients not do, 
right? So you can spin yourself in circles going through different offers, different programs, different services. And I'll never forget thinking like, oh, I posted it once and nobody bought it. Therefore, it, it failed. Uh, no. First of all, people need to see something about 15 times right now before they're willing and interested in buying it. And second, people need to know, like, and trust you. So there is a time factor to building a business that happens through your promotion and your launching of the same damn thing again and again and again. People get to see you as the expert for the thing that you're doing. So it's that dedication, that vocation, that commitment that is so critical to the success of a human running an online business in these times. And there's so much power in your intention, right? So uh, I love studying people. I love understanding why people do what they do. That's why my master's degree is in psychology. And basically, if you're trying to do something and to get better at it, practice, 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 and visualize the practice, right? So there's been a ton of studies, but the most uh, familiar one is with basketball. So when kids are practicing basketball, you can practice on the court, actually dribbling and making the shots, right? And you're visualizing it, practicing in your mind, walking onto the court. What does it feel like? What does it sound like? What does it look like? What happens? What's the feeling of the swish through the net? Combining these two things is the surest way to get better faster, right? It's not one or the other, it's both. So when you make the intention of, okay, I'm all in, here's the thing I'm doing, the program and package I'm currently selling, here's the business I'm calling in, I understand it's gonna feel clunky and hard because Emily said so and this is normal, and visualizing it, using that intention and the power of energetics, there's so much more to this planet than just what we can see, and using all of that to weave your work into the world. This stuff is hard. It's hard. And it gets to be easier. It gets to be easeful, pleasurable, joyful even, right? But there is sticky pieces to being human. The human struggle doesn't end just because we've created a business. People are people. Shit happens. People have miscommunication. People have great intentions but fail to follow through. There's so many pieces to building a business. And what I know from being a human resources manager and a recruiter for 15 years is that with bigger companies, you don't see the full picture. So I'm gonna show some examples today because a lot of you might have some Christmas presents from family. This is really cool nail polish that my mother-in-law bought me. It's called Vacation Vibes Nail Polish. This one nail polish comes from one company. Someone created the bottle Someone created the packaging design and then the actual packaging. Someone created the assembly line machinery to build this. Someone created the components in the nail polish. And then my favorite part, you guys, somebody created the name Vacation Vibes and then decided to sell this in the marketplace. How many nail polish colors exist in the world? Hundreds of thousands? How many nail polish companies? Thousands. How many do you think they need to sell to make a profit? And how big are these companies, right? So if Vacation Vibes, Pop Arazzi nail polish can exist on the planet and can sell and can be of support to someone who wants this color on their toes, which is what I just did, then your healing arts work in the world is valuable, valid, needed and can be sold but it's dedication the amount of people that must have had the thought the idea the business acumen the sales team right the production lines all of the people that were employed to create this you might not necessarily see in the nail polish bottle but as a recruiter i got to see it because i hired for every part of the organization whether that was for an IT company that has front-end work, back-end work, sales, landscaping, um, computer technicians, human resources positions, administrative assistants. In larger companies, you don't have to do it all. As a solopreneur, as an entrepreneur, 
you're responsible for all of it. The sales, the marketing, the HR, the client relations, believing in the product, the product development, the putting the product out there, the product design. You know, the, the design ingenuity and the engineers that formulated this bottle with this size of wand, with this shape of bottle, and then in the assembly line and the logistics that went into this are cray cray. But somebody pitched the idea, believed in it enough, and sold it, right? So your work gets to work too. But it is a business, just like all of these other businesses. Another example, this cute stuffed bear, right? How many stuffed polar bears exist on the planet? But this one was created, purchased, and then created with a necklace on it and dates to memorialize the polar bear at the Toronto Zoo that recently died. And so now people can purchase this little polar bear and part of the proceeds go to the zoo. But somebody had this idea, bought the polar bear, somebody sourced the fur, fake fur to create the polar bear, the nose piece, the plastic eye pieces. This was produced in some facility with hundreds of people that are working on the production line to create the tag, create the tail, create the necklace, right? All of this coming together is insane. But somebody had the idea, the tenacity, and other people threw their weight behind it. And how many of these do you think have been sold? I don't know. I have one. I got it as a Christmas present, so at least one person bought it. You have no idea how many people are buying a product or service. But we have to trust and have faith and move forward as if it's going to work until it does. And that's visualizing, that's showing up for it, that's committing daily until you're not committed. So with my corporate job, I woke up and committed every morning until I was no longer committed and I built that timeline out. And in this business, I wake up and commit every single day because I'm committed to my vision, to my North Star, to my clients, to your vision, to your business, to the people that you're helping. This is another favorite example. I love this book so much. This is called The Fox and the Star. And this book is so beautiful. I bought it for Cedar, but oh man, check it out, The Fox and the Star. Somebody sourced this paper. Somebody had the idea and created the design and the artwork for this book. Somebody pitched this to a publisher, Penguin Books, and got the idea bought and sold, right? Somebody created this artwork, created the words, decided, decided, that it was gonna work and it was gonna work for them and they were gonna figure it out. And I guarantee it was not easy. There are millions of children's books in the world. How hard it must be to pitch, to get an idea that says yes, to get it through the boards, the publication, to get it into print, and then to hope and to pray that it's gonna sell, and then to get it in front of different places and how many bookstores did they have to sell it to? And how many people purchase it? And where do they purchase it from? And each book is only, what, $15, right? And yet, somebody did this. And my kid gets to read it and love it. He almost didn't let me share it because he's like, why are you taking my book, Mom? If all of these beautiful things can exist in the world and get produced and be purchased, then you can create your purpose-driven online healing arts business and people can purchase services from you and be massively well served by you it's possible but it requires almost audacious faith in action it requires seeing everything as proof of what's possible not proof that it's not and if that means taking a side gig then so be it that doesn't mean your dream ends that doesn't mean you stop investing in your dream it means you invest in yourself by taking on that side gig, that side project, that freelance gig, building someone's website. Um, I had two side gigs for six months before I finally quit them to amplify my business more. And I really just wanted to be sure I could cover my kiddo's daycare so I could work while he was at daycare and uh, my business coaching expenses because I invested in one-on-one in -on -one business coaching. And so as long as those two things were covered and my bills were paid, then okay, I'm in. I'm in until it works. And this year it worked. The first four months I was in business, I made $395 in 2019. 
In 2020, my business made $40,000. 2021, I'm at 134,000 for the year. It is working. It's not working because it's easy or because I'm some genius. It's working because I believed in it. I believe in what I'm doing. I believe in my clients. I believe in you. It gets to work. If someone can sell and create and manufacture and build an entire company and business from nail polish, that is blue space age, then your shamanic, sacred sexuality, Reiki, tarot card, manifestation, goal, relationship coaching business gets to work. People need what you're doing, but it requires your devotion. It requires prayer and action. It requires failing and misstepping and stubbing our toes. And some days are going to suck. And other days you're going to feel like you're riding the stars. And that's part and parcel for being human. So do you want to struggle and have it feel sticky and terrible in a corporate job for the rest of your life or piecing it together or cobbling your income together? Or do you want to have it struggle with beauty and hope and faith in action, building something that really matters to you, that's of deep service to the world and helps other people. Because I know that's the one I want. No matter what, we're on this planet for as long as we're on this planet. Struggle is inherently human. There are moments that are gonna suck. There are moments that you're gonna wanna burn it all down, throw in the towel and say to hell with this, I'm just gonna go back to being a corporate cog in a wheel and let somebody else be the marketing department and the sales team. Somebody else can run human resources and client relations, I'm out. But if you can get through it as a solo entrepreneur, if you can get through the hard sticky middle phase that is your first thousand dollar month, your regular 3K months, your 5K months, your 10K months, and you can start to hire people to do the things that aren't in your zone of genius. You hire a virtual assistant, you hire an online business manager, you can hire a social media expert, right? And you can cobble it together and go with the bare minimum of stuff until you get there. You can Google and research and figure out how to build your website. You can start with a mailing service with a little email that says, hi, I don't know what I'm emailing you about, but I'm here. And that gets to be good enough. And when you're ready and you want more support, hire me because I am so here to support you. I am dedicated to this business. I'm not going anywhere. I am dedicated to this dream. I believe so much in the work you're doing on the planet here at this time. And I believe that it's going to be successful. I want you to believe in it too. You get to have a business that you love. You get to have a business that helps other people and you get to have a business that creates the income you want. That desire, that drive, that pull that you feel, it's there for a reason. It's not there because you're not supposed to do it. It's not there because you need more money first. It's not there because you're supposed to stay in your day job until when. But you get to figure out what works for you. Do you build it on the side and make a quitting date in a savings account? Do you quit your full-time job and get a part-time gig while you're building your business? You get to decide all those variables but I can guarantee that it's gonna feel way better, more expansive and exciting to create something on this planet that is uniquely yours, which is why I crafted the $99 business coaching bundle, creating your signature offer that sells. It is five hours of pre-recorded video content and worksheets to walk you through creating your unique program in the world. I'm gonna drop the link, it's 99 bucks. If you are sitting at home during the holidays being like, Ugh, what do I do? Do I eat more cheese? Do I sit on the couch? Do I watch Netflix? Invest in yourself and go watch these five hours of pre-recorded training. Do the worksheet. Send me a message afterwards. Let me see what you're coming up with. I'd love to work through it and talk with you. And create your business. Let this time be the launch pad of ideas for you for 2022. 2022 gets to be the year that you go all in, you commit, you devote, you dedicate yourself to this thing that's calling you. What you want also wants you. You're not in this alone, but you want it for a reason and it's supposed to be created for a reason too. This, I believe. 
All right, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what's coming up for you around this. And I'm here to support you. Have a beautiful, strange, in-between holiday time. And I'll see you next week.